Now, most people would enjoy, agree that uh, happiness is an important, maybe the most important part of life. But is it so important that we should have a minister in charge of our mental health mm. at the very heart of government? Well, that's what Lord Layard is calling for. He's a leading economist who's been looking into ways of improving levels of happiness in the UK for the last 10 years. He's with us here, along with uh, Elsa Harrison, who's the kind of person that he's hoping uh, would be helped. In the past, uh, Elsa has suffered from depression and anxiety. Thank you both, indeed, for coming in. Lord Layard, let's, let's start with you. Uh, I know you don't like this, this name, Minister for Happiness. No. Yours, it, it's <laughs> Minister for what Mental Health Wellbeing. But a lot of people getting in touch this morning saying, do we really need one? Well, mental illness is a huge problem. It's a great hidden problem in our society. In fact, one in three families has got somebody who's suffering from mental illness in, the, in their family. Um, of course, they're often ashamed of it. They don't talk about it. Um, uh, and the result is that we don't have proper services for people who need this kind of, uh, kind of help. So, whereas if you take people with physical illness. Nearly all, all of us, if we get physically ill, we get treatment, just assume it. But only a quarter of the people who are mentally ill in treatment, and this is really scandalous. And a big part of the problem is that there aren't the facilities in the NHS, especially the psychological treatments are not available in the NHS in the way that they should be. And that's why I'm arguing that unless there's somebody with real clout uh, pushing for this, inside the cabinet we will not have this injustice and it is an injustice we will not have it rectified having clout and pushing for treatment is something that as an individual if you're suffering Elsa you sometimes can't do even with your own doctor can you absolutely it took me a very long time to even go to my GP and explain that I was having very distressing symptoms um, and then when I did, she had a very limited range of what she could offer me, that that was all that was available on the NHS really for someone like myself, um, was medication. And medication was great for me, it was really helpful, but it's just like taking a painkiller. It, it can take away the, um, some of the symptoms so that I felt well enough to continue, but it didn't deal with the underlying problem. So it was only when I actually had some of the, the psychological therapies that Lord Layard's talking about, mm. that was when I made a real improvement and I began to get my life back and be able to live well again. Mm. So Layard, Lord Layard, you'd like a, a cabinet minister responsible for mental health, but we don't have one representing cancer services or that kind of thing. So I wonder whether, can't this just be done as part of the existing Department of Health, boost that rather than a, an entirely new and probably expensive role? No, it has to be within the Department of Health because, of course, there's a, a big interaction between mental illness and physical illness. Uh, a lot of people get physically ill because they're mentally ill. And if we treated mental illness seriously, <coughs> we would save a, a huge amount of suffering and a huge amount of money. For example, if you think of children, mental illness holds back their ability to learn, it leads to teenage pregnancy, drug and alcohol, then it leads on to domestic violence, it leads on to benefit defendants, all kinds of things which cost us as taxpayers huge amounts of money. So what you can show is that if we had psychological treatments properly available uh, for children and for adults, it would cost us not a penny. Mm. It would literally cost taxpayers not a penny because of the savings on these other costs. Mm. And that's why it is so shocking that there is such scrimping on this. When commissioners are looking for things to cut back on, I'm sorry to say that this mental health that, that comes in, in, into their sights, and especially at the moment, it's tragic that uh, in many parts of the country, child mental health services are being cut. Fortunately, adult mental health services in terms of psychological therapy is expanding through a government program, but it's a huge battle. And I would say to any listener out there, please fight this battle uh, from the bottom up. Mm. Uh, I'm saying it's got to be fought from the top down as well, but fight it from the bottom up. Protest to your MP, mm. protest to your GP if the services are not available. Elsa, how bad did your symptoms get? They were really very distressing and when I had what I call a flare-up, when the symptoms really came out, uh, despite the medication sometimes, yeah, it was very difficult. Um, there was one occasion I remember I was completely disorientated and I was found wandering around the streets near my home weeping because I thought I was lost. I wasn't lost, I was very close to home. But I just was so disorientated. At other times, um, 
I feared driving because of my thoughts about crashing the car into a wall. Not because I wanted to die, but I just wanted the pain to stop. Did you get the talking therapies on the NHS? I did indeed, and it was just fantastic. Yeah, it really was. And how long did you have to wait in the end? Um, after I had had my assessment, which happened very quickly, I had to wait five months. Mm. So that was another five months of distress. But once I got the treatment, and I had 11 sessions over about three months, I mean, it was just amazing, the transformation. Mm. It, it can really work for a lot of people. Thank you so much for coming in and uh, sharing that uh, with us this You're morning. Welcome. Good to see you looking well. And Lord Leo, thank you thank very you. much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you. <coughs>